Hi, and welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, today we're going to go through all the stock requests that came through. But as I always do on this show, I like to start out with a lesson. And I had a request to go into, uh, give a little detail on how I view gaps. So I want to kind of distinguish and look at, the, I, I personally think there's two main types of gaps that are actionable events. Uh, so I want to go through that today. So let's go ahead and get into the agenda. So uh, when we talk about gaps, we're looking at whether they're buys or sells. And that, that could be a buy could actually take place in an up move or a down move, meaning a, a gap down or a gap up. And I want to show you and kind of distinguish between what uh, the way I look at that. And then um, there's other times based on where we're located, where we are relative to the moving averages, what our trends look like. Um, we ha might have a differing thought process uh, about a gap. So I want to go into that and give you a little detail on that. And then we're going to go through the stock requests that came through, as I said. So let's go ahead and get into this lesson now and uh, discuss gaps. Okay, I've got a daily chart of Boeing up. Uh, I looked at the weekly. There are actually really good examples on that as well, at least for what I'm trying to do with gaps. So I want you to uh, realize that you can apply the, the approach that I'm talking about in any time frame. But I'm going to go through all these different examples really fairly quickly. But I want to just start and give you an idea. So let's just look at it from this standpoint. When we have a gap, there's there's one, there's one of two things that can be happening, I think, or at least this is how I want you to think about when we see a gap taking place. Have we gone through a period of consolidation prior to the gap? So we get a gap like that. Or have we had a period of movement to the upside and then get a gap? Okay, now that can be the downside as well. We could have a move down, 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 and then get a gap right? So these, you're looking the other way. If the trend is going up, we're, we're looking at an expansion situation. Um, and we're looking to, you know, take profits in that type of a scenario. For this, in a consolidation pattern, uh, that a contraction phase where we've been doing nothing, we actually view the gap as a viable situation in the direction of the gap. OK, so and this can go either way. We could gap to the downside here. I'm going to show you an example of that. So um, I just want that as the starting point as we go through this. Now, let's zero in on a few of these, because the thing is, is that it's not always obvious. You could be looking at something like this, this first one. You notice how we're taking out these lows here where we come down and test, test. Uh, test again, and then we break, and then look at this gap here. It looks like it's, uh, or you could even look at that gap, but I'm saying more like if if we make a move to the downside, and it looks like we're breaking out, you have to go up a time frame to see if it's truly a breakdown or if it's just working back to the next higher time frame support. So this line here is the 18. I just overlaid it in gray. That's the 18 on the weekly. That's a 90 MA. It correlates exactly to what an 18 week would be. So as this moves down, we have a down move, down move, down move. You know, we're, we're working our way down. We even got a little gap. Then we get um, down, you, you can almost look at it. One of the things I almost want you to think about is, do we have, if we had bands up, if you put volatility bands up, would it look like we're getting to the lower end of the band or not? And in this situation, since the since we have the 18 week rising right here, we know we don't want to be a seller here. We want to look to go the other way. Now, look at what happened on this gap. So we've dropped down, as I said, we make a move down. And then the following day, we we gap down at the low end of this bar. OK, I mean, it's not a huge gap because we're not below the low of this prior bar, but it is it's like an over it's 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 a gap that overlaps with the prior price. But if you, you look at the close was here and we gap down here, what follows is actually what's more important because we, we had follow through to the downside. OK, and then when that comes back down and turns green, meaning it comes back up through the open and the prior day's low, we have something significant taking place, I think, after a move to the downside. 
Now, you get a little bit more confirmation when it turns positive on the day by going back up through the low or the close of the prior day. And that's a little bit more confirming evidence. And then you get even more confirming evidence when you come back up through the 18 week. But all of those are situations where you're looking to be a buyer based on the location to the moving average environment and the fact that we've made a drop into that move. Now, let's look at the other side of this um, other case, okay? And that's where uh, we make a move and we're consolidating and then we have kind of a, like a contraction phase. Now, we were outside that a little bit throughout this little period, but a lot of small bars just moving sideways. And, and let's put it in the context. We have a trend line drawn because this is the low and you go back to your prior high before the low and that's your anchor point. And then you go back to the prior high so you can draw a trend line like this. And as we draw this trend line, uh, we break it and then we come back down and test. Now, when it tested, it made a small new low. OK, and anyone who knows, I, I talk about a one, two, three reversal pattern. You can make a higher bottom, you can make a double bottom or you can undercut the low by a small amount and then turn back up. And it all qualifies as a test of that low. OK, so we've got the one, which is the trend line break Two is the test. And then if you notice this gap is actually the three. That's the three in this move. We're getting a gap that's confirming the change in trend. And we have a consolidation or a contraction phase. I want to be a buyer of this type of gap. That's a gap that I want to be a buyer of. Yeah, it had a little bit of a move to it, meaning um, it went from below the moving averages to above. It was a little stretched away from the moving average. But that's going to happen when you have gaps taking place. The one thing you can do is when you look at this, you can take this and fill it all in from the prior day's close. All right. And we know that's all green. OK, so it looks like just a big expansion bar breakout coming up through here. And I think we have to look at that as a buying situation. Now, if we keep going, notice what happened. We had the gap and then we actually had a little pinch pay to follow where we get a little pinch here and then we make two lower highs and then we break out. And we actually have a little bit of continuation um, with another gap, but it was following a mini consolidation or a mini contraction phase. So that's not really a sellable event. But look, we have an up move, another up move, another up move, and then we get a big gap up. Now, if you're a swing trader, you want to be looking to be a seller on this gap. You don't wait. You don't sit around and hope that this just keeps going. If you're swing trading, you sell expansion. This is an expansion bar after an extended move. We made a run of three to four days and then we get a monster gap. That is an automatic. If I'm a swing trader, that is an automatic gift of a sell. You just take advantage of that when it takes place. All right. That is something you want to be aware of. Now, it didn't fall apart after that. But when you're swing trading, you're looking to take advantage of uh, expansion. You want to buy in con after contraction or at the end of contraction and sell uh, once we see expansion take place. Now, I want to go back and give you one more example of a location pattern because Notice how this pulled back to a rising 18, which was above a rising 40, and they're moving up about parallel, and we have several days down. So we're not extended below the moving average, but we're coming down to price support. I mean, we can look back. We can see this is pretty good price support we're pulling back to. Uh, we also have a uh, rising moving average location, right? And then we get this big gap down after four or five days to the downside coming into support. This is something where, again, you let it push down. And then when it comes back through the open, you could be aggressive if you want to play opening gap reversal. This is how you do it. You let it open. You let it feel it out for the first five minutes, see if it pushes down a little bit more. And then when it comes back through the open, maybe not right at, you know, it's a $200 stock. So maybe you give it 25 cents above the open, maybe even 50 cents uh, and make sure it kind of gets back above that opening price. More conservatively, we'd be coming back through the low or the close of the prior day. Uh, and both of those are kind of triggers for little uh, buy signals, especially when you're looking at it in relation to what's going on with the trend. So keep these things in mind when you're looking at these gaps. Take advantage of them when they offer them stretched away from the moving average after a run. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. Just briefly, my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. For the individual package, I send out two to three reports each week plus a video for that package. Uh, if you have an interest in giving it a try, you can use a coupon code STOCKTALK. 
and uh, get the first two months for $50. Let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. So this week, instead of doing an indice, I'm going to show a couple stocks that I think are showing some kind of key characteristics. The first one is Viva Systems. Uh, and, and I actually I want to introduce a new concept. And uh, to explain this, I'm going to um, open this up, this weekly chart with the zigzag. Um, so one of the things that I'm constantly looking for as a I, I try and be a contrarian as much as possible. And I kind of think about the proliferation of technical analysis now and how so many people are using technical analysis, looking for ways for where the majority could see things wrong or you know, just misinterpret what's taking place. And so one of the things that um, I, what I would call a, a failed new high or a failed new low is taking place or took place at the low here in Viva, where um, we make a bot, we make a new low here. You see how this broke below this low and we got follow through, right? And then we broke through this consolidation area and we got follow through. And then we went through this consolidation and we got follow through to the downside. Now, look at what happened here. We had a break to the new low and we have zero follow through. We had a couple of tails form. In fact, on the breakdown bar, we had a tail. The following bar it tried to go to a new low, another tail, another tail following that uh, with a higher bottom. And then we turn back up through this kind of resistance zone here on 175. So I would consider that a failed new low. Now, th this is also, let me give you a couple examples of a failed new high. You see how this tried to break out and then immediately reversed? And so the promise of a failed new high for me doesn't necessarily mean we're going to switch the trend around, but we're, we should come back and check out prior support. I don't think the moving average is, is going to act as support in this situation. you got to go to price and look for where that level is. So if I'm failing here, this was a failed new high as well with very little follow through. And we come back to price support. In this case, it was back to that last breakout area. OK, so and now when I look at this one, what's taking place right now, we had a failed new low. So I'm looking for a move up into this resistance zone. It's actually exceeded that. Um, and we're showing some pretty decent relative strength. One of the things that I think is important about what's taking place in the market right now is when you look at a lot of the tech stocks, they've come down into a pretty big price support area. Um, I'm going to show you in the next stock how that's taking place in some industrials as well. But most important is the way it's driving off that support. OK, little rallies like this um, where the momentum is confirming the downsiders are not as important. Um, you can see if we look at it with the MACD now, we've got a new low here with MACD confirming. And then this rallies up and goes to a new low and the MACD does not confirm. So something to look for when we have momentum divergence. Do we have one of these failed new lows where we only go to a marginal new low and don't have follow through from that or go to a new high and don't have follow through from that? You want to be on the lookout for that. Um, so this stock is now rallying back up towards the 18 month line up at 257. I don't know that it's going to make it all the way there, but I think that's kind of like the next resistance zone to be on the lookout for. Now, ROK, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because uh, in, when you look at the industrials, at least when I, so every weekend I go through 400 stocks, the biggest cap stocks and sorted by the sector, and I'm looking at what's taking place um, across the board and looking for signs in, in a case like this or whether it's bottoming or not. We came down to this big round number at 200, and you can see on the monthly chart, we've got pretty significant support at 200. I mean, this is where it broke out from. So I'm on the lookout for signs of some kind of a reversal. We can see what happened. We rallied up and it actually did go to a marginal new low, I believe. Maybe it was just a double bottom. But more important to me is the way it drove off the low. You see the difference in this rally versus this round. I mean, this is real buying here. This isn't just a little short covering bounce or something like that. This is the type of ferocious buying we want to see that says that we've set a pretty, a pretty strong low at 200. The odds of this just turning back around and breaking down, I think, are really small. And the fact that so many industrials, so many tech, a lot of consumer discretionary stuff like that is starting to show 
these, this type of pattern, I think is a very good sign for the general market. So uh, I just wanted to cover those two things. One being the failed new high, failed new low concept. And the other being if we're coming into support and we get a real drive off the bottom with relative performance behind it, um, I think you have to respect that and the odds of like, and, and it's probably ending action, meaning we've probably seen the end of the decline phase, at least for now. Okay, Wayfair is um, is a stock that uh, has been in a ferocious downtrend coming down to pretty good support. It's been working sideways kind of quietly. It's trying to turn things around, but it's sitting at the 18-week line right now. It, it's it, But on a daily chart, uh, we've kind of gone through this uh, down phase and now gone sideways, and now we're moving back up. So I would look at it this way. If, if this can pull back and successfully hold the 18 here, 18 rising, successful hold of the 18, then I think we can sort of assume that this trend, the daily trend, is starting to move higher and that we're going to get through this weekly line and probably work our way up. There's a lot of room for this to rally. I'm not saying it's going all the way to 100, but I mean, there's some room in here for this to move up. And uh, if it can complete that pattern where it tests the 18 and turns up, I would be, I would be pretty interested in that from a trading standpoint. So I got this question from a uh, subscriber of my research, and he was asking. Um, so one of the points he made was he said that the uh, we had a one, two, three reversal on the weekly. And so I just want to clarify this. Um, we have a one, two, three developing on the daily, but I don't think we have that on. We only have the one on the weekly. I wouldn't really consider that a good enough test. Now, one of the things you can do when you're looking at these is try and figure out. So if I've got a one, two, three developing on the daily, typically that'll coincide with the break of the 18, okay, 18 week. Now, if we have a one, two, three developing on the weekly, that'll typically, not always, but typically it'll coincide with the break of the 18 month. So just to kind of keep your, uh, your trends and your um, one, two, threes in order and understanding which time frame is doing what, if we have a one, two, three on a daily chart that's clicking in, and that's going to kick in if we take out this high. If we take out this high around 166, 167, then we've completed a one, two, three on the daily chart and have a successful test of MACD. But that would usually coincide with a convincing break of the 18 week, which is what we're happening, which, which what is happening. So I just wanted to clarify that one point. Um, the other way you could play this is to let it break out. And if you notice, we have a flat 18 here. See how this is flat? You could let it break out and look for some kind of a pull as this is pulling back towards a rising 18, preferably with a little bit more strength here and a little bit more strength here. We get a little bit better convincing um, move a uh, short-term pattern is improving with some you know decent upside if it plays out that way okay let's go on to the next request here uh, so Sunrun this is uh, uh, solar I believe and uh, so you got to just get your time frames sorted out okay so if we go and look at a monthly chart we've got a declining 18 month we're rallying back up to so on a long-term trend this is finding support, but it's it's a rally counter to the trend, but it does have room up to about 40. OK, so that's that time frame. Now, if we go to the weekly, we've been kind of working sideways and look at the volume pattern. Look at the size of this big green bar. This is the biggest bar we have seen in quite some time. And it basically is, uh, you know, open near its low, tried to test and then took off, closed near its high. And uh, that, that's a really bullish bar when we see that, especially coming off of an 18 MA like that. Uh, we still have some resistance up here, probably high 30s, low 40s. Uh, but I would say there's some encouraging signs. This is still considered neutral, but signs of improvement taking place. Now, if we go to the daily chart, I've got a break of the trend, a break of this sideways consolidation and a test of that at 30 and now turning up from that, I think on earnings and look at the green DI kicking in and the ADX kicking in from a short term standpoint. We have basically like a buy signal, but I would be looking for this to have problems up in the upper 30s. So that's how I would frame this trade out. I'd say, OK, if I want to play this, I got to make sure I'm risking a small enough amount to make money, make a decent amount of money if I get up towards uh, 38, 39, 40, something like that. 
CDNS was another request here. Happy to see this one. This is one I've been highlighting to uh, in my uh, reports. I think this is outstanding what's taking place. We have a new relative high. Like this is outperforming the market and has been outperforming the market, but we're also showing that same strength that I was talking about in ROK. You see the strength off this consolidation pattern? That is what we want to see. Look at the ADX on the daily chart. I mean, this is impressive. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the first kind of little dip or pullback back towards anywhere towards this support zone. I don't think it's going to pull back that much. Um, if if we can get uh, any kind of a little bit more of a retracement here, uh, I would consider it. Now, you know, the, there's a couple ways to play this. You could have bought this on the close of this bar coming up through this area and through the 40 again as a as your first signal. This, the next signal is a minor pullback towards the 18 day or, you know, towards support. One of those two. That's what I'd be watching for on that stock. Uh, something to be on the lookout for. Now, HON is kind of interesting. And the reason is that um, the same concept, and let's just look at this. So, well, we'll look at it on the weekly, and I'm going to zoom in, zoom out a little bit. So we make a new low with follow through, new low with follow through, and then we make a new low with zero follow through. You see that? We want to be on the lookout for this, especially if we're coming into a prior zone of support. You see how this was the breakout area and we came back to that level. Now we hit a new low. We have momentum divergence on a MACD basis and we have zero follow through to the downside. If you know this pattern, this failed breakdown pattern, you know where your target is, is up around 200. So it's a really big asset to recognize that. But again, one of the most important things about this is the quality of the rally is suggesting to me that this is probably making a pretty good low. Look at the location it's taking place, the vertical move, the strength behind the move with the gap and everything. So I, I'm kind of encouraged by this. I think that the the end, I think this has made, this is kind of like the end of the decline phase for this. It probably has more sideways to go. And I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression. I'm not thinking this is market's just going to go straight up. I don't think we just go vertical in this type of pattern. Now, a stock like CDNS could go vertical, um, but HON is most likely going to hit this resistance zone and consolidate. And I think there's a lot of stocks that'll do that. But the good news is they, they have stopped hurting the market, right? The general market has more of a bias where the worst performing stocks or the stocks that have been getting hit look like they're turning and at least have a short to intermediate term up move coming. Let's look at TMO. TMO pulled back to a rising 18 month with strong ADX. And then it went through this ABC decline. Let me just define this for you. Down, up, down. ABC decline. Look at the minor failed new low. You see how this is a failed new low right at a big round number at 500? You got to start being on the lookout for these. Now, we didn't have momentum divergence here, but look at what the ADX is. No strength whatsoever. That is a really powerful sign, I think, that this is a this is a really good pattern to be on the lookout for. We're starting to see signs of improvement. What I'd like to see is some form of a test and then a turn back to the upside to kind of prove itself here. But pretty pretty interesting pattern. Uh, Airbnb is uh, is getting a pretty good rally, but this just kind of qualifies as a rally off of a low. We don't have a failed new low pattern on the weekly. Um, we've got some resistance, you know, uh, it's got a little bit more room up to 125, 130, something like that. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that this isn't making a bottom, uh, make an interim bottom or something. I'm just saying it would be a hard stock to try and make money in uh, right now, at least from this juncture, because we've got support starting around 125. So um, I, I'd like to see some kind of a retracement, some kind of a test and turn back up. Maybe if this tests at 100 or something like that and then got through the 18 week, we could see something a little bit more important develop. BNTX, I like this in that. Let's look at the weekly first. Weekly came down, made a marginal new low that failed, right? So we're making, we made a pretty strong decline and then it tried to break to a new low. Now, if you come back, look at where this did this. It did it right where it broke out from back here. This is really good. This is kind of good stuff to be on the lookout for, especially in stocks that are going through a bearish phase. We want to make sure you see when we get these failed new lows or they're taking place at support. I also like to see if the relative performance is improving. But we have this reversal now that's trying to take place, and now we're back above the 18-week line. 
and we have room to the 18 month it's up over 200 so when i see that now i go to the daily chart i realize wow i've got a reversal taking place with green di starting to kick in nice green bar breakout of this consolidation pattern i mean i think you could buy the breakout above 170 171 172 getting through this resistance or you could now wait for a pullback um, you know, back towards the 18 day that's rising would be kind of like your second entry. But if you look at this pattern, this is pretty attractive. And again, we have room probably to about 100, uh, something along those lines. Now, these are trades, right? These are definitely trading plays, but this is the first time in a while we kind of have everything working together. We're above the 18 week. Uh, we've got a pattern that looks pretty good with improving momentum conditions on the daily and we have room on the monthly. So um, be on the lookout for those kind of patterns. And I think, uh, you know, there, there could be some money made in the near term. Thanks for watching the show. You can find my research at RabelStockResearch.com. And if you have a stock request, send it to StockTalk at StockCharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.